Think about the best, juiciest, sweetest tomato you've ever had in your life. Where were you? Who were you with? I was in my grandpa's garden. That, by the way, is really me. Uh, a few years ago. <laughs> I was four or five. It was summer. Seems now like it was always 75 and sunny. I remember those tomatoes like they were yesterday. They were sweet. They were juicy. They were ripe. They, they were incredible. I'd be running around with my brother and sister, and I'd sneak into a garden to get some of those tomatoes. They were clean, too. My grandpa never used any pesticides, so I could just pop them right off of the vine and pop them into my mouth and enjoy them right there. The, those tomatoes were grown with love, and they tested like sunshine. Have you ever had a tomato like that? Yeah. It's hard to get a tomato like that today, though. Because even though we all want fresh produce 365 days a year, it doesn't grow where most of us live. Most of our fruits and vegetables come from California or Florida, and they have to come all the way across the country. The issue is that with all the droughts and all the expensive land and just lack of available land, we have to import more and more produce from other countries. That's a few more food miles. So what? What's the big deal? Why does that make your tomato in a grocery store so tasteless? Well, remember my grandpa's tomato? That sweet, juicy, fully ripened tomato? You can't transfer that tomato all the way across the country. It's shown to mush. So food companies have invented a way to make our produce more durable so that they can handle thousands of miles of transport. Here's how they do it. First of all, our produce is first bred for durability and transportation, not for flavor and nutrition. Then it's harvested way before it's ripe. It's picked when it's green and hard so it can make that transport. Now, these tomatoes will be treated with ethylene, and they will look red, so they'll look like something you actually want to eat. But the problem is you're still eating the same unripened tomato. That's why your grocery store tomato doesn't taste that good. Now, before I forget, and this is important, make sure you wash your tomatoes. USDA has found residue from 35 different pesticides on your average grocery store tomato, even the organic ones. Just because something is labeled organic does not mean it's pesticide-free. So how do I know all this? Well, for the last 20 plus years, I've been running supply chains just like this one for some of the top food companies in North America. If you take a look at that, that's a lot of steps and a lot of people touching your food and a lot of food miles that your produce has to travel to get from farm to your table. In U.S. alone, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but $160 billion of food last year could not make this trip and was wasted. Your produce loses 45% of its nutritional value from the time it is harvested at the farm until it reaches your table once again. That's why you don't have your produce lasting very long once you get it to your refrigerator. There has to be a better way. Well, there is a better way. There's a much better way to farm today. What if I told you that we could get that tomato from farm to your table in one day? What if I told you that we could do that and use 97% less water and absolutely no pesticides? What if I told you that we could grow 80 acres worth of produce in a small building in the middle of a city eliminating most of the food miles and drastically reducing food waste. That would be the most disruptive thing to happen to the food industry. It would change the way we eat. Well, the reason this is so critical right now is our planet will be a home to 9.8 billion people by 2050. That's 2.2 billion more mouths to feed in just the next couple of years. The only way we can do it is we have to learn to farm 365 days a year rain or shine. We have to learn to grow a lot more produce on a lot less land, using a lot less natural resources to feed our people wherever they live. That's exactly what we're doing in Cincinnati, Ohio, in Springdale, Arkansas, in Granite Falls, North Carolina, and in Daphne, Alabama, today and every day. 
we grow indoors, locally, and hydroponically. This one quarter acre facility, just five miles from downtown Cincinnati, produces 80 acres worth of fruits and vegetables. Thank you. We have built the first in the world set of grow zones, vine crop grow zones, to grow tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, and other vine crops that can grow completely without pesticides, that we can let them ripen on a vine and deliver them within a day anywhere. We have essentially built the next generation of vertical farms because what we're able to do is not only grow the widest variety of produce, but we're able to unleash the highest nutritional potential from your plants. We have built a variety of grow zones that are specifically designed for each crop type, unique crop type that we grow. We filter our air and water real time, sometimes as frequently as every 80 seconds. We feed the plants, we provide the best, cleanest nutrients so that then you can eat the cleanest, healthiest plants. How do our growers do it? How do they create this perfect environment for the plants to grow in? Well, it all begins with a seed. First of all, we look for our seed varieties that have the highest flavor and highest nutritional profile, not that can handle the transportation cycle. Second, we plant those seeds, and once they germinate, we transplant them into a grow zone just like this. At this point, plant needs four things to thrive. Plants need water, nutrients, CO2 or carbon dioxide, and they need energy. Now notice I didn't say sunlight. We were always taught sunlight, but what is sunlight? Sunlight is just a bunch of energy. It's just a bunch of photons shooting down from the sun, coming down to the earth, hitting the plant leaves, and plant leaves use it to drive photosynthesis. You see a lot of purple light in our grow zones. Purple light is just a combination of red LED light, primarily, and some blue LED light. The reason for the red LEDs and the reason we use so many of them also goes back to your eighth grade science. We learned in eighth grade science that to drive photosynthesis, plants need energy. To break apart that CO2 molecule, energy is required. It's combined with water, releases oxygen, and forms these sugar molecules, which we later eat. The energy required to break apart the CO2 molecule comes to us in a 680 nanometer wavelength, which happens to be the spectrum for red light. That's why we use red light LEDs. It is the most efficient way to photosynthesize for plants. And we've tested a lot of ways, by the way. We also provide our plants with the right nutrients at the right stage of their growth. Just like you wouldn't feed your babies the same food that you would feed your teenagers, we provide a special recipe for our young plants and as our plants grow and mature, their dietary needs change, and our recipes change with them. Farming indoors is all about managing and maintaining your environment, a very delicate balance within your environment. Our plants act like little pumps. They suck up all the water and nutrients that we give them hydroponically. They use it, and they process. They take whatever they need, and whatever they don't need, they trans-evaporate or breathe out. We capture that trans evaporation, condense it, and check for the nutrient composition in that condensation. We essentially know what we feed the plants and we know what they breathe out. Therefore, we know what they consumed and they ate so we can replenish only what they need. That is why we farm so sustainably. We waste absolutely nothing. Everything is recirculated and cleaned constantly. Now it's time to harvest those beautiful tomatoes. We let our tomatoes ripen on a vine and we do so to first let them reach their full maturity, to get the full flavor potential, and to get all the nutritional value that they can to maximize that. And we can also do it because we're not shipping our tomatoes all over the country. We farm locally, we sell locally. Now remember I told you just a few minutes ago that we can get that tomato and other produce from farm to table in one day. Well, here it is. For the last year, actually over the last year, we've been selling our freshly harvested produce to dozens of retailers and your local restaurants in, in all of our locations. Next time you bite into a tomato, do think about where it come from 
and do think about what role you want to play in this food revolution. Now, let's imagine for a minute a world where our kids crave these sweet, juicy, perfectly ripe tomatoes as much as they crave candy today. A future where instead of taking insulin shots, we can eat a salad. A future where we will place our grow zones all over the world from Sub-Saharan Africa to the Middle East, feeding our populations where they're growing regardless of their natural environmental conditions or availability of resources, taking a small but critical step towards ending world hunger. I stand in front of you today because 40 years ago, my grandfather inspired me with that little tomato to begin a career in food. I've worked hard for the last 25 years to bring good food to people everywhere. I never dreamt that at this point in my career, I'd be farming in the middle of a city. I never dreamt that heads of state would be calling me, asking me to build farms to help them feed their people. I never dreamt that I'll be part of the next food revolution. These ideas, these visions, these dreams are not just dreams anymore. We're making them reality right here in Cincinnati, Ohio, every day, one tomato at a time. Thank you.